if you're looking to save a little bit of time in lesson planning, um, I'm going to show you step by step how I use ChatGPT to help me lesson plan for my high school English classes. My name is Emma Pass. I am an educational technology consultant and a secondary language arts teacher. So starting off, this is ChatGPT. This is the 3.5, the regular model that's accessible um, to everyone and anyone. And if I were lesson planning um, for one of my high school language arts classes, I would usually start with a standard that I'm trying to teach or that I feel like we haven't covered yet. So I'm going to start by taking that standard. I'm going to copy it and then I'm going to go over to ChatGPT and I'm going to provide it with a prompt. Now, the higher quality the prompt, usually the higher quality the output that it's going to give you. And I follow an acronym called PREP, which stands for prompt. What do you want ChatGPT to do? So in this case, help me plan a lesson. R stands for role. I would like you to act as my co-teacher for my 10th grade English class. Then E would be example. So if you have an example that you would like it to model, um, this is something you could put here. So you might have like a lesson plan that you've uh, planned in the past that you kind of want to replicate. Um, you might have like a text that you want it to use. This could be a place for that. I'm going to save that for a little bit later. And then finally, the last P stands for the parameters. So I might give it specific examples like this is an in-person class with 15 students. I have a few students with um who are english language learners and a few students who read at a sixth grade reading level so any of the specific details that you want to give it um, you would put that here and then if i have any other specifics about what i want this lesson to be planned to be about i would include that now as well um, so i'm going to say i would like to plan a lesson to address the following standard and then i'm going to put that in quotes right there and then say, what ideas do you have? And now we're going to see what ChatGPT gives us. Now, ChatGPT and using generative AI is an iterative process. It is a back and forth. So what it gives you on the first go is usually not going to be what I end up using. Um, sometimes I'll take elements of it and I'll ask it to modify or adapt. Um, but it's not meant to be just like a single interaction, right? It's a back and forth. So it's giving me a lesson plan um, where we have, it's asking for a short story. Uh, it wants to use whiteboards. It has some differentiation in here. Okay, and this might be something that I work with. I'm going to say, I would like to use the story because maybe this is a story that I've used in the past or, uh, or I have as a part of my curriculum. Are you familiar? Okay, it's saying, yes, I'm, fam I'm familiar. And now it's giving me a lesson plan based specifically on this story, right? So this is a way that we could start modifying. Um, one thing I really like to do is I like to ask ChatGPT to help me provide vocabulary words. So I could say, could you pro provide me a list of vocab words from this story? Right. And boom, we have 20 words um, from the story. Now, this is where you have to be really careful with ChatGPT and misinformation. 
because I have had instances where ChatGPT will provide me with what looks like a great vocabulary list from a story. And then the words don't end up actually being in the story at all. Um, they're words that might be related to the story, but not actually in it. So I'm gonna take a really unique word from this list, like vexation. I'm gonna go back to the story and do a search of that word. And look, the word doesn't actually appear in this text at all. So that's a great example of how um, ChatGPT seems like it can be really, really useful, but you have to be really intentional with that use. So instead, I'm going to actually provide the text to ChatGPT, and I'm going to say, I am going to provide you the text. Please pull 20 high level vocab words from the text I provide you. And then I'm going to do that same thing again, where I'm pasting in quotations into ChatGPT. And then this time, let's pick a word and we will um, double check and make sure that it's actually from the text. So that same control F search, but this time, yes, it's actually pulling us a word from the text. So again, the quality of the input will determine the quality of the output. You have to give it a lot of information to get something valuable back. But now I can take this list and I can say, can you provide me the definitions of these words separated by commas? Oops. And then it's going to give me the list. It's giving me the word. It's giving me the definition. Can you replace the dashes with commas? Again, here's that back and forth between me and ChatGPT. Okay, now I have commas separated, word and definitions, and this might be the first part of my lesson plan for this unit is I'm gonna go to Quizlet, um, which is like a flashcard type review site that I absolutely love. I log in with Google. I just have access to the free version here. I'm going to make a a flashcard deck for my students with these words. So when they come into class, before we dive into the story, we can review a bunch of uh, note cards together. So I'm going to go to create study set and then create from scratch. And then down here, this import button is going to allow me to oops, paste words separated by commas, which is why you saw me make sure that ChatGPT was formatting it in that way. So I'm going to copy that, pop it in here, import those words. And now I have a really nice study set to provide to my students made really quickly. This is something that would take me, you know, an hour to do previously. I can now go back to ChatGPT and say, okay, great. I've got um, this vocab deck. What context do you think would be helpful for students to know before reading this story, All right? Before I get the response from ChatGPT, um, again, you wanna keep in mind the potential for bias and misinformation. So before I just provide this information to my students, I would want to go and fact check it. Um, any information about Gabriel Garcia Marquez or magical realism or the socio-political context of Colombia, right? I would want to do the fact checking for any information that ChatGPT gives me here. but. These might be little points that we discuss prior to reading as well. And then I might say, now, could you provide 
me discussion questions for this standard. And I'm going to go back and I'm going to grab this standard. And I do find that the questions that ChatGPT produces, and particularly like the way they're worded and how they categorize them, um, are really, really helpful uh, as an English teacher. So I ha now have tons of questions about the central idea and the theme that I could then pose to students, right, as a whole class, in groups, in a pair deck, um, during our reading as a way to help structure this discussion. So. This is how I um, approach lesson planning with ChatGPT. Again, really what I wanted to demonstrate was that this is an iterative process. The first lesson plan that it provided to me is never the one that I use. Instead, I have a lot of back and forth with the program, trying to kind of pull out really specific pieces of information. But again, always checking and double checking that um, the information it's giving you is correct and accurate and relevant before you use it. Don't forget to subscribe to our channel and our email list for more tips like these.